You cannot give God just anything. And if you are not effectively prepared, you are dishonoring God. Yes, I'm preaching, but I'm listening to myself, and I'm listening to the sound that is coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, personal vision, corporate vision, family vision, ministerial vision, academic vision, business vision, whatsoever area of life you find yourself, you need vision to be able to be your best. And Joshua chapter 1 tells us, before I get to Joshua chapter 1, because there is something I'm still going to say. In that place where uh, we read in Proverbs 29, the Bible tells us, he that keepeth the law, the law, the law. Please pay attention here. In every area and aspect of life, there is always a law guiding that thing. Ministry, there are ministerial laws. You know, some pastors, then the church, then the ministry, and they get up every Sunday, they preach every Sunday, and they, they don't understand that their work is much more than preaching, that there are laws guiding the things you do. There are laws guiding your preaching. There are laws of the land guiding your counseling. There are laws guiding your place of meeting, your location of meeting. There are laws. He, the Bible says, he that keepeth the law. There are principles of success. He that keepeth the law, happy is he. It is when you follow the process, you follow the law, that at the end of the day that you will rejoice. I declare you will rejoice in Jesus' name. Let's come to Joshua chapter 1 now, verses 7 through to 9. Only be thou strong and very courageous. To accomplish anything in life, to succeed in life, to prosper in life, you need courage that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. You see that word there again? The law. The law. The law. According to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us whoever thou goest. I will continue the reading, but please pay attention. The Bible is saying, whether you are in the north, there are laws concerning what you are doing. If you follow the law, you will prosper. With the silver thou goest. If you are in the south, you follow the law, you will prosper. If you are in the west, you follow the law, you will prosper. If you are in the east, you follow the law, you will prosper. It says that thou mayest prosper. Where? I can't hear you. Wherever you go. Listen to me, you are a living success. Amen. You are a success story. Amen. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, success will follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, that is an assurance we have. That anywhere, whether in your home country or outside your country, wherever you find yourself, Follow these laws, and then prosperity will follow you in Jesus' name. Verse 8, this book of the law, see the law again, shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong. And of a good courage, be not afraid. Look at me. What is keeping you where you are is fear. And the Lord wants me to tell you, be not afraid. Amen. If you're a pastor, you say, the area where I found myself is very tough, is very hard, is, is very difficult. The Lord is saying, be not afraid. Amen. He's with you. He will walk with you. 
Look beyond the problems. Look beyond the challenges. Look beyond the obstacles. It says, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. No matter what has happened, no matter what is maybe happening. Let me tell you something. You have testimony about the Philippines. We'll tell you the good testimonies. If I tell you the other side of it, you say, ah, nothing is happening over there. Are you with me? How do you feel? You started a church, and everything is happening, and somebody took about 35 of your members and sold them away. How do you feel? But those are not the stories I came to tell. Praise the Lord. The person who felt, uh, when we are going, we see what is going to happen. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we be like them that dream. The same person who thought, I have the connection, I have the power. You don't pay me this, I'm going to cause you harm. The news got to her. That instead of the church going down, the church is moving forward. Yeah. She came to church. She saw the church. She was scared of coming to greet. I went to her and I said, how are you doing? You are welcome back. Praise the Lord. Do not be dismayed. There are people that will stand with you. There are people that will stand against you. There are people that want you to succeed. There are people that want you to fail. There are people that are with you because of what they are going to gain or what they are getting. Never, never be moved by any of all those. Be a man of vision. Somebody say, be a man of vision. Be a woman of vision. Once you know where you are going, no matter what they are doing over here, what they are doing over there, what they are saying over there, what they are saying behind you, you don't allow any of those to move you. The more you listen to all those things, the more you are distracted. The more you are not able to move forward. The more they kill your spirit. Amen? And so, you come up, if there is any challenge, come up with a new strategy. Come up with a new vision. Come up with, and then you don't give sleep to your eyes. Amen? You have the pastor saying it, uh, getting up in the morning, not that, uh, well, I'm not uh, in the U.S. now, nobody cares. Even when I'm here, those of you that are around me, you know, I don't rest. I know my resting day is coming. Amen. I say my resting day is coming. Amen. When I drop dead, then I will rest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I got to Philippines, and I know this is a, a new opportunity. To honor God, to glorify God. I have met people that have been there for seven years, for ten years, that cannot even talk of one thought of the membership we have right now. I met with the indigents of the land. They invited me to their meetings. They don't even have what we have right now. I got there and I said, Lord, how do we go about this? Come up with a vision. Come up with a strategy. And then pursue your dream. Pursue your vision. And don't just say, this is how we used to do it. Different grand has different textures. Am I communicating? There are stony grand. There are rocky grand. There are tony grands. There are good grands. There are grands that are just by the roadway. You just do your part and God will do his part. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Those who will soar, like the eagle, don't waste their time pecking around with hands. Who are your friends? Are we communicating? Decide your friends. I can tell you within the short period of getting to the Philippines, I already decided the people I cannot move with. The pastors I cannot sit down with because they're not going to help me and my ministry. I decided where am I going myself? And I keep pursuing that and keep pursuing that. I look at three points. Number one, unchangeable foundation for success. Unchangeable 
foundation. When it says something is unchangeable, we're talking about the laws, the laws of God. It means those things are irreversible. It means those things are permanent. And I'm going to be giving you 12 laws of success. And you apply these laws in different areas of your life, whether personal life, business life, ministry life, or you will succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then understand that the, you, you must have a goalpost. You must have something you are pursuing. Nothing in life can be accomplished without goal. Goal is a blueprint with which we build. It is a bedrock on which to build. Goals are better written down for clarity and permanence as the faintest pen is better than the sharpest brain. It's an old saying. Write it down. Note it down. In your department, write it down. In your family, write it down. Goals spur us to achievements. Goals pull out the best from us. They give us the incentive and the motivation to work hard. They help us to keep focus on the, in the midst of discouraging circumstances. Goals gives us a reason to live and makes life meaningful and worthwhile. Be a woman of goal. Be a man of goal in life. Set goals. God had a goal in creating man, and he achieved it. Man was not just a biological chance. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by the God, of, by the God Almighty. Nehemiah had the goal of rebuilding the broken walls of Jerusalem, and he achieved it. Those who never serve God with their family have never set it as a consuming goal like Joshua did. What did Joshua say? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Please look up here. You can apply this to any area of your life. When it comes to ministry, apply it to salvation. When it comes to your own personal career, what is that thing that is lost? What is that dream that you had when you were young? If you're old right now, if you're still a student, what is that thing you desire to be that you are not yet, you have not yet become? The Lord is saying, the Son of Man, you now, you now, you have come to seek and to rescue, to save that which was lost. The, the plan and the purpose of God for your life that is missing. You want to seek it, you want to find it, and you want to attain to something in life in Jesus' name. Praise God. But for the sake of time, let me tell us these laws, this unchangeable foundation for success. Number one is prayer. You must be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Before you ever start anything, pray. While you are in the middle of it, pray. When it seems you are coming to the end of it, pray. Pray always. Pray without ceasing. God knows, he's the one that knows the way through the wilderness. And um, he will help you. Amen. Call upon him. Lean on him. Listen to him. Follow his leadership. Pray every step of the way. Begin with it, continue with it, and finish with it. Number two is picture. Number one is prayer. Number two is picture. What do I mean by picture? It is dream. It is vision. It is portrait. It is an image. You have the mental image, picture, of what you want in life where you are going in life, what you, are, what you want to accomplish in life. Have that picture. The Bible says, Vish, without vision, people perish. Vision is a mental picture of visualization of a non-existing or invisible object. The thing is not there, but you can see with the eye of the spirit that that thing is there. You are not there yet, but you know that is where you are going. And then you look like a poor, wretched person right now. But then you 
Imagine yourself in a palace. Imagine yourself in a big car. Imagine yourself successful. Amen. Somebody just means that. Amen. I said, imagine yourself Amen. and you will succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then number three is precision. Precision. What's precision? Accuracy. Be exact. Don't just be like the one beating about the bush. You pick this one, you drop it. You pick that one, you drop it. You know why some people, instead of four-year college, eight years they're still in college? Because they are not able to make up their mind on anything. Today they are studying biology. Tomorrow they are studying accounting. Another day it is IT. Because they are not exact on what the vision or the goal of their life is. Be sure of what you want and where you are going. Avoid beating about the bush. It is not every book that you read. It is not every story you pay attention to. It is, it is not every workshop that you go. Amen? Know what you want in life. Know what you want in life. You know, there are some uh, workshops I attend here with uh, some of our pastors say, and they're hearing me. And then they get to a point I said, I don't think I need these kind of workshops. Because it's not just attending workshop or seminar or event there or there. Yes, I encourage people to go. But then, after I have attended, I come back to myself. I sit down by myself. I analyze everything. Is this what I need now? Is this going to help me? Or is just populating people's kingdom and just building their kingdom? And I said, no. I know better than this. I need something better than this. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not for that kind of conference anymore. You need to be exact what you really want, precision. And then persuasion. Paul said, I am fully persuaded. If you're not fully persuaded, you will not go far as a Christian. If you're not fully persuaded, you will not, you, you, you not be committed to the v dream and the vision of your life. Uh, you, if you're not persuaded, what is persuasion? Uh, it is excitement. Be excited about yourself. Please look up here. Please look up here. Some of you, you look unhappy. You look sad. You look sorrowful. It's like you don't know what life has brought. You don't know why I'm even living in the world. Please, from today, be excited about yourself. Be excited about your life. Be excited of what God has done in you. He had a plan and purpose in your life before creating you. Say to yourself, I am, I am a miracle in the walking. And you see miracle follow you in Jesus' name. So, encourage yourself. You are the number one encourager of yourself and of your life. Anything you want to accomplish in life. If you are waiting for people out there to encourage you, you will never, never get it. Because they don't know the plan of God, the purpose of God, the vision of God for your life. They are not your creator. And they don't know what you are going through, how you are going through that thing, and why you are going through what you are going through. They don't know. They don't understand. And they will talk. They will mock you. They will say all kinds of things. But you be excited. Amen? Amen. And you will see yourself happy anywhere you go. Joyful anywhere you go. Please pay attention. Never allow anything that anybody said or that anybody is doing to kill your spirit. You are your own sheer leader. Share up yourself. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Look at me. Look at me. If the devil is whispering anything to you, make it you turn. Go to the mirror. Look at the man in the mirror. And point to that man. Point to that man and say, I thank God for this person. Thank God for your life. God has a plan for your life. Amen. If you're not happy with yourself, who is going to make you happy? And then the next thing is passion. What is passion? It is desire. Strong desire. Passion. What is passion? Passion is hunger. 
passion is just passion for success, passion for victory, passion for progress, passion to be who God has made you to be. Look at yourself and tell yourself, I am not a failure. Amen? And you will never fail. And you have that passion. You want to be a medical doctor? Passion. You want to be an engineer? Passion. You, you are tired of this uh, five member in the church, ten member in the church? Passion. You need a new vision. Please pay attention. If the same thing you have been doing all the years is what you keep on doing, you will keep getting the same results. If you really want anything to change about your life, about your church, about your ministry, about your business, about your career, even about your health, you need passion. Passion. And then you pursue it. You pursue it passionately. You pursue it, you pursue it intentionally. You pursue it deliberately. And you see great things happening in Jesus' name. You know, if you have vision and you have no passion, that vision will die on timely death. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. And then, when you have the passion, what's the next thing? Persistence. You persist. You, pers you don't give up. You are tired, you don't give up. You feel discouraged, you don't give up. You keep working. You tried and it looks like you have failed. You have not failed. Somebody say, I have not failed. You know, in, uh, in, in the business world, in, the, in manufacturing in, in, in particular, there is something that is called uh, WIP, Work in Progress. Amen? Every time it looks like it's not adding up, it's not working out, or say it is work in progress. You've heard of the story of Thomas Edison. Where is Thomas Edison today? He's long dead and gone. But because of his persistence, because of his passion, because of his persuasion, because of his precision, because of the picture he had in mind, and he stuck to it. He tried the first time. It didn't work out. The second time, the 20th time, the 200th time, it didn't work out. He did not give up. Don't give up. Amen. Your miracle is on the way. Yes. I say your miracle is on the way. Yes. And very soon you will rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So persist. Persistence is diligence. Work hard and work smart. Avoid procrastination. Avoid it. The next thing is precaution. Precaution. If you are going to succeed in life, study your environment. Study the people that are around you. Precaution is protection. Precaution is a safeguard. Work within your... Uh, how do I put this way now? It, let, let me talk with the pastors first. Many of us are having challenges. I really don't want to talk too much, but those of you that have been around you see that I always think outside of the box. If I don't think outside of the box, the churches in our region will not be what it is today. And I've had occasions that some pastors will say, hey, pastor, this that you are doing, trouble is coming. Some overseers will say, this that you are doing, if the GS is about it, trouble is coming. And I said to myself, the GS wants me to succeed. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. And if this one we are doing, because this is the tradition, the culture, it's not helping the world. I am not a manager. 
Am I communicating? You need to know who you are. I am not what? If you're looking for a manager, go elsewhere. I'm not a manager. I am a leader. Manager manages what is already there. Manager maintains the status quo. Leader leads the way. The leader comes up with new innovation. The leader comes up with new idea. The leader is enterprising. And I've got to know myself. And that's why when some of you are talking, grumbling, complaining, and doing your church or church or church, you know what I do? I put one finger here, I block this. I put the other finger, I block this. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you don't know. Some of the things I'm doing, I have already run it by my own leader. To get this, to get this, to get this, I think we need to go distract and distract. And then some questions I, I, I ask, and I answer the questions, and it's like, okay, go ahead. And some people that didn't know, they don't have my vision. They don't know where I'm going. They don't know how I'm going about it. Uh, they see he's doing this, and then they want to do the same thing, and then they get into trouble, and they say, ah, ah, but Pastor Dada is doing it. I'm not doing it your way. Praise the Lord. I came up with a vision for us. Before I ever will come up to say, let us do this, I have spent quality time praying about it, thinking about it, planning about it, consulting about it. Some of you that work closely with, with me, you know. How many times we sit down together, this, 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 before it gets out at all. Don't just wake up, but then please understand part of precaution. Understand, every family have their own tradition. Am I communicating? Yes. Part of the precaution is, know what is obtainable in your own family. This is our family, Deep Alive Bible Church, I need an amen. amen. And you don't want to say that because I want to do something, you do things that is completely out of the norm. Work within your denominational allowance. Am I communicating? Yes. I tried, it's part of planning. What are the allowances I have? What are the things I can change? There are certain things I cannot change and I don't touch them. I don't go there. But there are certain things I can change. And if I'm called for questioning, I'll defend myself and uh, I will pass. And somebody will pass. Yeah. I said somebody will pass. Yeah. You can apply that to your family. You don't pick up what is happening in somebody else's family and apply it to your own family. You destroy your family. Yeah. Are you communicating? Oh, yeah. You know, there was a time the GS said, some of you, you pick the message I preached in Lagos to thousands of people. And then you go and play it in your church of 20 people. And then you scatter the people. He said, the people with me have been with me for so long. They know the way I do things. Even if any of them, if 20 people leave, you will not even know that they left. But your people, they are not at that level of maturity and understanding. And then go and preach it to them and you scatter everything. And then you say, it's the devil. It's not the devil, it's you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. With all thy getting, somebody help me. Amen. Get wisdom and get understanding also. Come up with a strategy, a new vision that will enable you to get to a glorious ending. Let me, because this is not just preaching, it's also teaching. It's not just teaching, it's also training. I'll, I get to the Philippines. We don't have deeper life there. And then you think, I'm going to be teaching them, cover your head. I'm going to be telling you, then before you come to church, you must wear skates. Is that salvation? Is that the Holy Ghost baptism? Is that the sanctification? Is that humility? No. No. Come as you are. I said, come as you are. Come as you are. 
and then teaching them one by one by one, and then personal interaction. Personal, I think it was uh, two Sundays ago, I had to discipline one of them. And I said, you're dressing, nothing ex uh, what do you call it? Give me the word. Not exposed, but just not long enough. And I said, I will not allow you to do anything in the church today. These are people I just met a few months ago. Are you with me? But now, I have developed a relationship to that point. That I feel this one should have known better. Am I communicating? There are still people there that even if they dress worse than that, I won't touch them. I will just leave them until they get to that level. And then I said this one, why is this, why is this? I developed them to that level. And they will not get angry. All you get is, I'm sorry, pastor. There's one. I was with a husband. And we got near the house. And we needed her to do something. And then we called her. And then the way she came. Now, you need to come to Philippines to understand some of the, all these things I'm talking about. I don't want to be too graphic here. Praise the Lord. The way they dress and everything. And, uh, and then she came. And the husband was there. And I said, and I called the name. And I said, what is this? I said, oh, pastor, I am very sorry. That is their cultural, natural way of dressing. But now I am doing my work. Am I communicating? Yes. Working on them, not just openly alone, but one by one. Pastor Chuba is here. I go to their houses. I sit down with them. My, the Bible I use here is not the one I use over there. Amen? My Bible has English and Tagalog. Do you want me to read for you in Tagalog? You will think I'm speaking in tongues. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And just like he said, they don't know the Bible. They don't know where Exodus is. They don't know where Romans is. You have to, as you are calling it, you have been telling them, I have to begin by, well, Old Testament is on the side. New Testament is on the right. And then, little, little, just like, is it pre-K, kindergarten, which one is a lower? The pre-K. Praise the Lord. And then you get there, you say, this is not the way we do it in deeper life. You don't have deeper life in the first place. <laughs> Praise God. What you actually have is no life. You are just trying to create the life. And so wisdom is required. Are we communicating? Yes. And the same thing I have done over here. Whatever I'm doing there is what I've done over here. Over the years. But in a more strategic way. In a more strategic way. So if you're really going to move forward, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So know what the church allows. I know people have been calling, Pastor, the people in the Philippines, they need to come and sing at the global choir. I said, global choir, you, we don't have deeper life there. <laughs> Praise God. If they come the way they are, I will be fired the next moment. Not by the GSE will understand, but by the amount of uh, deeper life uh, members and pastors. Praise God. So leave me alone. Let me build them to that level. Praise God. Where that I will be proud of them. What I'm working on now is their salvation. Is their transformation. Is that they will get to know God. And as I talk with you right now, there are some of them that within this period of time, they have given us smoking. Some of them have given up drinking. That is more of my joy. Praise the Lord. And so, it will be well in Jesus' name. And then be painstaking. Painstaking. That means be thorough in anything you do. Don't do anything haphazardly. You are looking for a glorious ending. And please, when you start well from the foundation... I have been teaching salvation in different ways, in different ways, and I'm not in a haste to get away from that until they really get it. 
Every Sunday, our pastors were there. You say, how many of you want to give your life to Jesus? Everybody. Following Sunday, come. After you preach, everybody, how many of you want to give your life to Jesus? Everybody again. Praise God. To them, to be born again is you come to church. Then you want to be born again. So you have to painstakingly, thoroughly, effectively, meticulously work on your dream. Work on your dream. Finally, sorry, not finally, the next one is productivity. Measure what you are doing. How you are doing it. You see that I'm not quoting too many scriptures in this sermon. I have a lot of scriptures here, but I want to get all these things clear. So you can apply them to your life, to your ministry, to your business, to everything. Productivity. If what you are doing is not yielding results, then it's not working. It's not working. Make sure that your effort is not in vain. And your effort will not be in vain in Jesus' name. If you need to change your tool, if you need to change your style, change it. Change it. Let me say this to you. The me you know today is not the me I used to be. I had to pray for God to change me for the sake of the ministry. If not for the ministry, I will prefer the way I was. And I mean it. You must have heard me say before that I was an introvert. I don't bother about people's life. Nobody bothers about me. I don't get involved in anything. I just mind my own business. But if I remain that way, the ministry will not move forward. So I had to pray. Lord, I want to be a blessing. Change me. Amen? Amen. And now he has opened my mouth wide. Amen? Amen. Amen. And no, do no devil can shut it. Amen. And no demon will shut it. Amen. And no problem will shut it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Productivity. I had to specially pray. I was never the type that smiled. Check up with people that, Georgia people, they are hearing me now, those that were there when I nearly got to Georgia. They know that I was a stone face, deep, real good, original, deeper life. Praise God. But where is the result? Losing up. Somebody say losing up. Somebody say losing up. Amen? And you see God move in your life. If you smile, you have not committed sin. Hello? Learn to smile a little bit. Tightening your face is not salvation. It's not sanctification. Productivity. Look at your style, your life and everything. And then partnership. You need to partner with people. The Bible tells us that two are better than one. I know many times we apply that to marriage, but it's more than marriage. When Jesus was to send the disciples out, how many did he send out? Two by two. Two are better than one. When God created man, how many did he create? Two are better than one. Even the animals, he created them two by two. Two are better than one. Look for a ministry partner. If your partner is not there, I mean your marital partner is not there, look for a ministry partner. Somebody you can confide in. Somebody you can talk to. Somebody you can share your mind with. Somebody you can rub my weight. Somebody that you are not afraid of and is not afraid of you. You can talk to yourself. Look for somebody. You know, there is something I discover in nursing and in medicine and some other courses. When they are studying, they look, they call it study group. 
Am I right? Those of you in nursing, they call it study group because two are better than one. Partnership. But the number one person you need to partner with is the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Partner with God. Don't ever run ahead of God. Don't think you know it better. Don't think somebody did it before and it's going to be done. No, 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 no. Side by side with him. And if you are not side by side with him, then fall in line behind him. Let him lead the way. And all you do is just, you follow, you follow. Then finally, there is one I call past PKC or past Picacity. And that's a big, big grammar. I have to come up with big grammar so that you can become big. Somebody say amen. 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 What is perspicacity? It simply means discernment. 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 Learn to discern. Be sensitive to what is going on around you. Be observant. Be observant. Be proactive. Don't be a reactive person. This is what I'm saying. Please look up here. No matter what you are doing, part of planning is assume problem is coming. Are we together? And then devise solution to the problem. Don't wait for the problem to come before you start running up and down. Think ahead of time. Should a problem like this come, what will I do? Discernment. And how many have I given you right now? Eleven. I just want to know if you are following. Put your hands together for yourself. You see, some of you, you, uh, you need to come to the Philippines. We always, we always clap for ourselves in the Philippines. Praise the Lord. When you want to get everybody's attention, say, put your hands together for yourself. And then... They are happy. Finally, somebody say finally. Praise. Praise. There is power in praise. Praise God for who you are. Praise God for who he is. Praise God for what he has done in your life. Praise God for what he's done in your life. Listen to this. Praise or appreciate people around you. Appreciate people that are supporting you. Appreciate them. And finally, Look at me here. Look at me here. Appreciate yourself. What did I just say? Praise yourself. You must have heard me talk about a gamma lizard before. A gamma lizard jumped down from a roko tree. Whatever a roko tree is, the grammarians will tell us. What's the name of a roko tree in English? My goodness. Those of you online, they are telling me here that the meaning of a roko tree in English is a roko tree. <laughs> Deeper life people. <laughs> Praise God. A gamma lizard jumped down from the tall tree and then he lifted up his head. He looked up. He looked down. He looked up. He looked down. He said, if nobody prays me, I will praise myself. Somebody celebrate yourself right now. <laughs> celebrate yourself, celebrate yourself, celebrate yourself, celebrate yourself. Amen. Just make yourself happy. Amen. You just need to see me by myself sometimes. Some people think, oh, he's lonely. No, I'm never lonely. Praise the Lord. I'm never, I, ne I don't feel lonely. Instead of that to come, I will sing. Learn to sing. Amen? Amen. Let me wrap this up by saying, the man who is too engrossed and satisfied with yesterday's achievements will never make new discoveries in life. When you rest on your trophies, we accomplish this, we accomplish that. 
they become crushed and useless. Don't rest on your trophies. Resting on past glory is the way to rusting. Each and every one of us needs to establish a new vision for our life, for our family, for our ministry, for our department. Where there is no vision, the Bible says, the people perish. The people will stagnate. The people will rust away. Every opportunity you have to serve is an opportunity for you to excel. It's an opportunity for you to shine. It's an opportunity for you to come out better. It's an opportunity for you to have a new goal, a new vision. And great goals leads to wise plans. Wise plans leads to intelligent action. And the outcome of all this process is achievement. That is when you have a good success that we read about in the book of Proverbs, I mean, in the book of Joshua. Second point, my time is very short now. Unwavering focus of service. Unwavering focus. I've talked about that before. You set your goal. You fixate your mind on the goal. First Kings chapter 20, verse 39. First Kings chapter 20, verse 39 and 40. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, that is, somebody cried to the king and said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then thy life shall be for his life, or else thou shalt be a talent of gold. Verse 40. As thy servant was busy, I can hear you, Say it one more time. Here and there he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall the judgment be, thyself has decided it. Understand that when you have a goal, don't waver on it. Be steadfast, be consistent about that goal. Goal or clear goal. Again, would lead to wise plans. So what do you do? Avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 2 to 4. Shambhalat and Tobias were trying to distract Nehemiah. Nehemiah refused them, distracting him. He accomplished his goal. Second Kings chapter 2. The sons of the prophets were trying to discourage and to distract and to deter Elisha. Elisha refused them from distracting him. He accomplished his goal. Elisha knew that Elijah was going. What was the goal of Elisha? The power of Elijah. What was the goal of Elisha? Double of what Elijah had. And Elisha knew that all these sons of the prophets, they are satisfied with the status quo. They want him to be like them. He said, no, we are not in the same shoe. I am of a different breed. Tell somebody, I am of a different breed. I am an ego. Tell somebody. I am not a chicken. I am swearing high. And you will swear high. In Jesus' name. Number one, avoid distraction. Number two, avoid too many activities at the same time. Don't be jack of all trade and the master of none. Amen? Mark chapter 1, verses 37 to 39. Mark chapter 1. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. That's about Jesus Christ. He was, all men seek thee, all men seek thee. He was not ready for all men seeking I must be here at this time. I must be here at this time. Be a man 
of focus, avoid too many distractions. And then the third thing, avoid the fire brigade approach. Many of us, we don't think ahead, we don't plan ahead. It's at the last minute, we start running up and down. Avoid fire brigade approach. We read it earlier this morning in Luke chapter 14. If you're planning to build a house, you do, what's the first thing the Bible says you should do? Sit down. Tell somebody, sit down. Sit down and plan. Avoid fire brigade approach. And then the next thing is avoid discouragement. Avoid discouragement. What did I say? When the devil sees that you are destined to succeed, he will unleash the host of hell against you from different angles to cause you to surrender. You will not surrender in Jesus' name. He will accuse you. He will oppose you. He will bring sickness to your life. He will bring people to misbehave to you. He will bring people to disrespect you, to dishonor you, and then he will try to create this unity and this harmony in the church, in your life, in your family, but never, never give up. God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. When he came the second time, he said, be strong and very courageous. The third time he said, have I not told you? Have I not told you? That tells you discouragement is the enemy of your destiny. Amen. Finally, number three, unbeatable footprint for action. When you are going to build a house, you need the, what do you call it now? The plan, that is a bit, there is a, what do you call it? The blueprint, thank you. The blueprint, the plan, the plan. Make sure you have the blueprint of what you want to do and everything is in the word of God. If you don't follow the blueprints, you will not get exactly what you intended. When you follow the blueprint, not following people, you follow the blueprint, not following people talking, you will be surprised. They will say you can't do it. But you say to yourself, I can't hear somebody. They will tell you you don't have money. You say to yourself, be positive about yourself. And please, pastors, pay attention here. Fathers, mothers, pay attention. Students, pay attention. And this is very, very important to what we are talking about. People may disagree with your style. What did I say? Because it is your style. It is not their style. Am I communicating? It is not their style. It is your style. Never allow anybody to talk you down because of your style. If your style is working for you, stick to it. Pastor Dara may not like it. Amen? Why? Because it is not my style. But at the end of the day, when you succeed, will Pastor Dara be happy? Ah, uh ah. -uh. I will come and celebrate you. Amen? I will come in my regalia. And I will tell everybody, can you see? Can you see? It is your style. Amen. Amen. People may disapprove your style. They disagree with it. And then they disapprove it. Always remember, they are not your boss. They are not your judge. You know, it's foolishness. I see some people, they are not, they're, they're even your pastor, and then you are doing something, and they say, eh, they want to do it. 
They want you to do it their own way. Let me help you here. If you have a committee of seven, you have seven trouble. If you have a committee of 21, you have 21 trouble. If you have a committee of three, you have three troubles. So the less the committee, the better your trouble. Are you with me? When you have people that always disapprove, 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 be careful. Be careful. They disagree with your style, they disapprove your style, and then they will try to discourage your helpers. Devise a way to cut them off your life. Don't even tell them I'm cutting you off. Are we, are, am I communicating? Yes. They will give you more trouble. Like they gave Joseph trouble for his dream. Find a way to eliminate them, not kill them more. <laughs> because somebody will say, the pastor said eliminate. Eliminate them from your plan. Praise God. But again, remember what I said, no, be sure you are working within your denominational allowance. Don't say it's my style and then you are bringing in strange fire. It will burn you. What did I say? Understand, in your family you can do anything, but when it comes to the church, there are rules and regulations and process and procedures that we follow in the church. People will try to demean you Chambatland and Tobias, they say, oh, look at what they are building. Even folks, if folks climb on it, it will crumble. It has not crumbled yet today. Amen. 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 They may try to deny you. you no, know, we've been talking about Philippines, Philippines, Philippines. There are people here that say, what are they doing there in the Philippines? One cent, they have not contributed. They deny you of their resources. There are people in your church, they say, well, they don't like your style, they don't like your, uh, uh, the things you are doing, and then they don't pay their tithe and offering. Listen to me. Whether you pay your tithe and offering or not, God, God is going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. I said God is going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. You, the one that is going to be at loss at the end of the day. And that's why I don't bother myself about people who don't pay their tithe and offering. Why will you bother yourself with somebody who is already a thief? They're, they're not stealing from you. Who are they stealing from? God said, you have robbed me. So why should I bother myself? They need to go and repent first, make right their life. And so make sure that by the grace of God, you don't deny anybody of what God is doing in their life. Don't deny them of the resources of your support. Don't deny them of your prayer. They need your prayer. Your pastor needs your prayer. Your pastor needs your support. Your pastor needs your help. Your pastor needs your presence. And the same thing for your spouse. The same thing for your leader. And those of us who are leaders, the people we are leading, they need us also. We all need one another. And the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 John chapter 6, verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. That nothing be lost laws. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had them. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did say, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come in the world. They were against Jesus, but when they saw what God has done, they give testimony. Rise upon your feet. It is your turn. Amen. It is your own turn for people to testify about you. 
about the goodness of God, about the grace of God, about the plan and the purpose of God for your life. It is your time. It is your time. Check up yourself. Do you have any vision? Do you have any plan? Do you have any goal? If a pastor, how are things?